Hello everyone, I'm talking to uh, David Middleton from Alliance Artist Management. Good morning, David. Good morning. And thanks for accepting this interview with us. I'm um, happy to help out. Thanks, David. So, the topic today uh, is about, you know, what's interesting for uh, agents or managers, or would you, would you define yourself a manager or an administrator in the first um, place? Gosh, I, I think... I think I wear many different hats. I'm a manager. I'm an mm -hmm. um, I'm an agent. I'm a bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. I'm a um, I'm a contractor. I do I do lots of things for our company. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know the primary responsibility is uh, you know manager and booking agent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, can you share with us uh, how does the process of first of all spotting a new potential ensemble or a musician for your roster? Uh, works and then the process of you know assessing if it's uh, if it's a good candidate for you. Like, what are the elements that make you decide one thing and the other? Uh, well, a lot of factors go into the decision making process. Um, as you may remember from when you worked with us, um, we receive management requests every day from all walks of life and all all kinds of different musicians and so on. Um, essentially unsolicited what we call ASMs, Artists Seeking Management. Um, and I'm sure many arts management companies are uh, also receive these inquiries too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to be honest, it's not the best way for a new or young ensemble to try to seek management. They're, they're, they're at least not from my perspective. Um, Artists that we've taken on or ensembles that we've taken on in the past have generally come from either word of mouth from a, a person or people that we trust um, already in the music business um, or from uh, just following the career path of an ensemble uh, and seeing exciting things happening for them. Mm -hmm. And then approaching them like th th this was this was uh, the case when we brought on So Percussion to the roster. Mm -hmm. They had already had management. We could see that they were doing excellent things. They were getting great reviews. They were uh, had a terrific visibility. They seemed to have their act together. Um, and uh, you know, we we also felt a group like that was very. Um, appropriate for the roster that we maintain mm -hmm. in that they are they're unique to their genre they're at the forefront of their genre and they are just excellent musicians mm -hmm. um, a group like the Calder String Quartet they came to us this was prior to um, our beginning Art uh, Alliance Artist Management seven years ago but that group mm -hmm. came to us Basically, upon the recommendation of a conductor and musician uh, named Ransom Wilson, a flute player and conductor that we, we were working with at the time, mm -hmm. who experienced a very young Calder quartet, but he got very excited about their potential, and he, um, he suggested we take a look at them. Um, and again, trusting Ransom and his expertise as a longtime musician in the field, we thought, all right, we should take a look. And when we first heard the Calder Quartet, you know, there was they, they were a, a little bit rough around the edges, but we could also see that energy and charisma and uh, excitement in their playing that you know other groups perhaps didn't possess at that time for mm -hmm. being such a young ensemble. Mm -hmm. um, one more example, uh, again trying to give you an overview of how ensembles come to our roster. Yeah, uh, the, one of our most recent, and I think one of our most exciting. Um, uh, additions to the roster is the Dublin Guitar Quartet. Mm -hmm. um, management companies kind of, I think we, we all understand that working with a guitar ensemble, it's, it takes a lot of extra work and so on. But this, this particular ensemble, um, I'm proud to say I actually discovered on YouTube. Um, they, uh, I was doing some research um, into contemporary music festivals in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And their name kept coming up on various festivals and at concert venues and so on. And I, I simply did a, a quick search, and the first search that came up was a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And it was of the group performing a, a transcription that they had done of one of Philip Glass's 
uh, most popular string quartets mm-hmm. called Mishima. Mm-hmm. And I was completely mesmerized by the sound and the playing. I'd heard the Mishima string quartet many times in the past, but to hear it performed on guitar mm-hmm. um, was just for me, it was very electrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, also the production value of that video, again, another important point, was uh, was excellent. They, they, they took the time and spent the money to produce a very nice video. Um, and right off the bat, I was impressed by it. And I, I tried to look around to see what other engagements this ensemble had, but really it was just confined to Ireland. And again, what I think makes them special and appropriate for our roster is that they are the only acoustic guitar quartet that plays only contemporary music. Um, and mostly with a minimalist slant, like Philip Glass, Steve Reich, Arvo Pert, uh, Ligeti, etc. So, so uh, they, they have even some uh, Irish rock bands that they've arranged their music. So the music is is always very new. It's very fresh, and it's mm-hmm. not that typical mm-hmm. guitar quartet music like Brazilian or Latin American or Bach transcriptions, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, what what also impressed me about this group is when we were deciding to bring them on we asked them well would you ever consider doing a, a, a Bach arrangement and they, they the answer they said well no not on your life that's not what we are that's not what we, what we do and I <laughs> thought that was the best answer they could have given because they they had a very specific vision mm-hmm. and they had a very uh, specific idea about who they were and what they wanted to do and they were not willing to compromise on that and I think that is for the entire Alliance Artist Management, that can be said, that the ensembles we represent are, they are tirelessly devoted to their specific genre and to the style that they play in. They they don't turn to us for ideas about what they should be doing or, or what repertoire they should be doing. They have a very clear sense on who they are, what they do, and what they're best at, and they don't compromise on that. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. There, there are so many factors that, that you mentioned that um, if 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 you agree with me could be generalized for example we had to to you know advise young musicians that are out of conservatory on how to make themselves visible to to agencies that would then not be send emails but do things well possibly do things differently but then maybe we can talk about this one more uh and then make yourself visible and stick to your vision first of all have a clear vision and stick to it do, would you agree that these would be four um, possible suggestions to give or pieces yes, of advice? I, yeah, I, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I I always am kind of puzzled by the uh, the lack of attention some musicians or ensembles give to their their exploiting the context in their in their wider world. Mm-hmm. I think is the best way to say it. You, if you think, um, for instance, on our roster, the vocal ensemble Contus, there are nine singers. Each of them has at least a bachelor's degree, if not a master's degree, or, or some actually have doctoral degrees. So they're, they're the, the number of contacts and the number of influences and the number of people that each of them knows individually is enormous. So when, when a young ensemble, uh, you know, obviously they're, they're brand new, they may not have as wide a connections, but there are always people out there, say a new string quartet, the four of them will have six or eight contacts each that they can reach out to and they can perhaps exploit or, or, or seek references from and so on. Um, again, when, when, a, when an ensemble just comes to us and says, look, this is what we do, we're very good and, and hope you'll bring us to your roster, it's just not, it's just not enough, um, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, again, exploiting those relationships, if, if an ensemble knows a conductor or a composer or, or the, the director of a festival that can say to us, we really would like you to take a look at this group. We believe in them, and uh, it, it tends to go a long way. Mm-hmm. Another very important factor, like I mentioned with the Dublin Guitar Quartet, mm-hmm. even though they had uh, really only been touring in Ireland, they took the time to create an excellent video. Mm-hmm. And they have excellent photographs, and their 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 publicity materials that they created were right off the bat impressive and, and useful for us. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, again, for a young ensemble, extremely important to make that initial investment in, in themselves, mm-hmm. to make sure they've got a, a, an excellent uh, video profile, that they've got their 
social media um, aspects working like Facebook and Twitter mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so on. Make sure that they have excellent photographs. These things I know for a young ensemble can be expensive, but the uh, the the return can be uh, can be a good one if they if uh, if the materials are in good place and they can impress uh, a management company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it is you know it is it's half of the uh, equation these days. Mm-hmm. You not only have mm-hmm. to sound good, but you have to look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I think as a as a topic, the one that you should maybe do an uh, actually not maybe you should do an initial investment in your um, image or or press kit somehow and be present on the social media because I have the feeling that many uh, young musicians think that that's going to be what's what's given to them by the agent that picks them up. Right. Do you see what I mean? And instead, it's kind of the other way around. Like, um, is it so that you prefer to work with uh, ensembles who, or, or you know, solists or whatever that already have a clear understanding of the how to use the social media, and then potentially then when when they start working with you, maybe maybe you start using the social media for them, but you need them to have a clear understanding of how they work and potentially be able to use them by themselves. Is that so? Yes, absolutely. We don't we don't want to be the ones to educate the ensemble on how the the business side of things works. I mean, there's always a little bit of that, but it's best for an ensemble to know, you know, the to get off the ground by having all of those things lined up: the the, the social media, the video, the publicity materials, an excellent recording, um, all of those things coming to a management company with in, in hand it makes. Our jobs as managers much easier it makes us uh, much more productive on behalf of that ensemble. Mm-hmm. That we are not taking the time to kind of develop those things for them. Yeah, yeah. And I remember from my days at Alliance that you know when when an ensemble makes a new video or a new recording and so on, then of course they ask your advice about it. But it's always like the initiative comes from them. Or sometimes right. when it's time, maybe you guys tell them, "Hey, why don't you do a new photo shoot? <laughs> it's time." Yeah, and and again, we 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 do that is part of our jobs as managers to make sure that those things are continue to evolve or the image continues to change. Um, you know, after two or three seasons, you don't want to keep using the same photographs. You want to keep using the same sound or video mm-hmm. clips um, when we do our own social marketing for these ensembles. Yeah. Right. Um, I wanted to to go a bit deeper in the in the topic, new versus old. Meaning, um, how do you feel about you know, taking up new uh, ensembles in your roster if their uh, artistic product is, let's say, a new string quartet? If their artistic product is exactly the same as any other uh, string quartet, meaning normal concert format no right. no blending with other genres like no Calder quartet kind of like what what where's the you know border uh where's the edge um well Calder quartet is again the right example because when um we were looking you know when we first uh were looking for a young new ensemble to take onto our roster we had Literally dozens of choices. There were the, many of them that are all the same age, maybe uh, early to mid twenties in in age. They had been together for six or eight years. They were starting to get some good uh, following and press. But what I again, what set the Calder Quartet apart in my eyes and in my ears was their uh, their ideas about programming that they they you know they had a very firm foothold in the standard string quartet repertoire but even at the the, the in their mid 20s they knew that the key to success these days was to push that envelope into working with and cultivating composers both um b- bigger name composers but also peer composers people of their own age that they were they were uh, having music was being written for the Calder Quartet by people in their mid twenties, and um, you know some of those people at that time are now much more well known. But the Calder Quartet was able to capitalize on that uh, in the early stages of their career. And again, we we looked at you know we sat and, and listened to and looked at materials and and went to concerts for a dozen string quartets. But again, they were all kind of doing that same thing. They had that same model. Even even competition winners, we thought well. There are lots of competition winners, but if they're not doing anything that's 
exciting or or new or we can see that there will be immediate growth then it's just uh it's just not as interesting because again there are there are hundreds of of those kind of string quartets and ensembles like that they really the the coming back to the Calder quartet they set themselves apart in our eyes just because they were at a young age, thinking uh, as if they had been around for 20 or 30 years in the way that they were talking about their career. It was, mm -hmm. it was exciting to us. Okay, okay. But then again, uh, in your roster, you also have um, uh, ensembles that do things a little bit more traditionally. Isn't that so? Yes, uh, we do. For, uh, for instance, the the Kavafian Shub Schifrin trio, um, they, that's uh, David Schifrin on clarinet and Ani Kavafian playing viola and violin and Andre Michel Schub on piano, a very um, traditional chamber ensemble. They've been performing together uh, for over 30 years in, in various ensembles at the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, but you could say they're a very traditional ensemble. There's not a lot of new music being written for clarinet, piano, and vi uh, vi uh, viola or violin. Mm -hmm. So their composers are very traditional, but they do it at such an excellent level that they are appropriate for our roster in that we don't think there's another clarinet, violin, piano duo out there that does it any better. Mm -hmm. um, our Philharmonia Quartet Berlin, these are the, is a, a group, you know, that was founded by the principal concert master and the string section leaders of the Berlin Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. um, again, mostly uh, traditional repertoire. They, I, I, I don't know of any uh, string quartet that plays a finer Beethoven string quartet than, than this one does. Mm -hmm. um, however, their programs still remain interesting in that they will find a hidden gem to complement the traditional, um, you know, but but by perhaps a lesser known composer, mm -hmm. um, and and again they uh, they're specialists at what they do. Um, I I've been working with this ensemble for I think 18 years now, and I still <laughs> am yet to experience a finer string quartet. They just they play at an amazing amazing level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. So excellence is of course just as important. Yeah, absolutely. No question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, I think that the two these days must go hand in hand. But when you have, yeah. uh, we, we, we can be more forgiving of a bad video or bad photographs from a group like the Philharmonia, uh, Philharmonia Quartet Berlin because yeah. their excellence on the world stage is, is you know, f at least for me, it's uh, somewhat unsurpassed. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We can give them a little break if they, if they don't perhaps have the best publicity <laughs> materials because the... Uh, the other aspect of their career is such a strong one. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, so you said that you've been working with them for 18 years. This this suggests to me that since Alliance is seven years old, then you were working with them from somewhere else before. Is that so? Yeah, um, that's true. They actually, they've uh, they followed me from two different companies to to this company. Um, okay. So yeah, the, it, my. my my years with them have been many, you know, compared to some of the other ensembles. Like the uh, Dublin Guitar Quartet is really mm -hmm. just two years old with us now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so in your in the previous companies in which you worked, or if you have to look at your uh, peers, like other agencies, um, tough question if you want to be diplomatic, I imagine, but I'll I'll give it a go. Uh, do the like is the process of you know taking up or getting interested in new um, new potential ensembles or musicians for their roster, do you think that it's the same? Or do you know, does every agency or every company look at different things uh, to you know, evaluate? I really think it comes down to personal choices. Um, you know, uh, we here at Alliance, we've actually turned away offers from ensembles that are excellent in their field. Um, I, I can't, I wouldn't be able to think of any off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, I think that the process is, in the end, it still comes down to individuals. Um, I, you know, a young ensemble could be very excited to be working at one of the major arts management companies out there, but if they don't have an individual in that company who's looking after them and helping them make their career decisions, then it, it, it doesn't matter if they're at a big company. Um, and I think it goes back to that process of, of choosing ensembles for your roster People, everyone has has different criteria. Um, I think in the end, you, you know, those that play the play well do the best and are, are the most attractive. But I, I know agencies uh, are often 
only attracted to ensembles that have won a competition, for instance. But again, that's that's not how I feel about it. I I, I kind of go in the the opposite direction. Um, I think that you know competitions obviously have their worth and they do help young ensembles get a a, a start. But if there's not something beyond that competition win, then um, a young ensemble can essentially be exploited for a few years and then 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 forgotten about. And that's that's again not. Mm-hmm. What we like to do at, at our company here, we feel and, and we believe in investing in ensembles, um, you know, for the long term. Yeah, and I think this this shows um, uh, this shows very well from your when you when you said you know when when we saw the Calder Quartet at the beginning they were a bit rougher on the edges but you still invested in them you believed in them because you scouted them for the long term and not for the short run. Exactly, yeah. and you know now they uh you know again we w- brought them from our previous company when we uh to this company when we started it seven years ago so they've been with us i think about eight or nine years now um but uh and again it's it's because they are not competition winners it perhaps ta- has taken them a little bit longer but they're the they are so multifaceted in the different types of engagements that they um, that they have done in the past and they have cultivated some very important composers um, to write music for them uh, and and in fact this coming uh, this coming May they'll be recording with Thomas Addis the composer and he's going to be playing his piano quintet with them at the piano mm-hmm. and he's going to, they're going to do the world premiere recording of one of his new string quartets mm-hmm. um, they have a very good relationship with somebody who you know a composer that is enormously well known on the world stage um, the, 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 the composer Peter Etvush is writing a, a work for them again somebody very well known throughout Europe Um, and the United States. Uh, they played a string quartet for him in Los Angeles a couple of seasons ago, and he fell in love with them and their sound, and he uh, immediately wanted to write something for them. So, mm-hmm. I, I, again, I think it's they, they've done things in a very smart way that um, I think is very different than other string quartets of their age. And, again, that's what has made them so appealing to us. Mm-hmm. And, actually, that's also a positive message to send to young composers uh, because it – It sounds to me like if they do work with peers, like if they do compose music for peers that then might get famous, then they also might be risen to fame. Because I, I'm doing this uh, uh, survey uh, here in Sibelius Academy and other academies in Europe asking students of any discipline really in classical music, what are their fears or their, what do they worry about if they think about their um, career after school? And right. uh, all the composers that I heard were were completely puzzled about you know we we don't really do a real job and and we're not like our, the best possibility in our career is actually to go to teach but nobody even teaches us how to teach so they they were really you know scared and and worried about what's next but if they start composing pieces for for their peers then it might be a chain that takes them with them with it right right yeah yeah. yeah. All right. Um, do you have any suggestion, David, to to tell to young musicians that get out of conservatory from your heart? <laughs> uh, I, again, I come back to that. Um, be be uncompromising in in how you feel about what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, don't if somebody if a manager says, oh, "Well, I'll bring you to our roster, but only if you." play string quartets while juggling cats and then you know that's you, you don't just do something because somebody suggests you you should do it in order to get yourself um ahead you you know be uncompromising in your art be uncompromising in the composers you like to perform um if if again perhaps a, a more gentle suggestion if you if you are a champion of only new music and somebody wants you to perhaps play a Beethoven or a Bach or something and it's just not how you what you do it's not what you're best at then just don't do it because it because people will know they'll they'll know that this is a stretch for and and a compromise in the art that you're trying to portray okay well thank you very much then you're welcome i think this is really precious information and many many students will love to hear your words about this topic Well, great. And again, if I can be of any other assistance, um, you know, please let me know. You can look me up through our company website. Um, send me a note. Give me a call. I'm happy to help.
good. Thank you very much, then. You have okay. a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye.